Oh, hey, what up? This is Josh Rubin from Resource Healing and Performance. Have you ever wondered why you're so constipated? And maybe go to the bathroom two to three times a week? What if I told you that a decrease in thyroid hormone actually decreases GI mobility and actually leads to constipation? And it has nothing to do or something to do with the food you eat. Stay tuned so I can show you the link between the thyroid and constipation. Hey, what up? This is Josh Rubin from East West Healing, and today I want to talk to you about the link between the thyroid and the GI system. Now, I'm going to get into the science of it and then the simplicity of it, and then give you some basic recommendations. But I want to just give you some little bits of research, I guess, based off the work of Schaefer, Bond, and Kim, talking about hypothyroidism and constipation. And quoting them, and based on the research, the reduction in peristalsis, which is that wave-like motion of the GI system, or the large intestine, to actually move feces along. So the reduction in peristalsis and hypothyroidism is a main pathological process, and constipation remains the most frequent gastrointestinal complaint, where diarrhea is usually the most common complaint in hyperthyroidism because there's an increase in GM motility. Gastrointestinal motor dysfunction manifested by altered intestinal motility in transit time has widely been accepted as a leading cause of gastrointestinal symptoms of thyroid disease. Hormonal effects of the GI tract may be a direct result of thyroid hormone. As well, they go on further to talk about edema, which I'll talk about a little bit. Hypothyroidism char characteristically results in accumulation of glycosaminoglycans, mostly hyaluronic acid, who cares, in the interstitial tissues throughout the body. Bottom line is this leads to interstitial edema that is particularly evident in the skin, heart muscle, skeletal muscle, but also in the gastric smooth muscle. This edema in the gastric muscle predisposes the person to dysmotility seen in hypothyroid patients. So we're seeing this. Now from our perspective, the, the state of your GI system is actually the state of your metabolism. Because as we've talked about, you are a cell, you're made up of cells, you begin as an embryo as a cell, and you multiply as cells. Your cells are in all your tissues, there's three trillion cells, and they're director of all the systems. That's why our, our nutrition philosophy is basically nutrition based on human physiology to affect the cell level, and affect the human from the inside out, not the outside in, and just focus on one system at a time and segment the body, and look at the body like this, and we really look at the body as a whole. So, with that, you're a bunch of cells. The cells regulate the systems. If we can control the cells and regulate how the cells are producing energy and using glucose and thyroid efficiently, we can actually regulate the state of vitality or health, a homeostasis that we're in. So I forget my point in this. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there. But we're showing the link between the thyroid and constipation. Now, if we think about it, for stress, the stress is a stress is a stress. It doesn't matter what it is. You eat a Pop-Tart, you stub your toe, you're running from a lion, whatever it may be, a stress is a stress is a stress, and the body reacts the same way. As Ray Pete says, stress is the perceived need of the body's need for sugar. And when we're stressed, our body releases excess glucocorticoids to fight this need to help us regulate our blood sugar, regulate our heart rate, because heart rate is regulated by thyroid hormone, as well as... Th uh, blood sugar, so we can fight inflammation. And we actually need more energy. Now our body goes through a way of doing this. The first is it stores glycogen in the muscle tissue, but mostly in the liver. And it stores this for many reasons, to fight stress, to help us get through the day, and to help us get through the night so we don't wake up in a stressed state. The problem is because people are doing more, they're eating less, they're more stressed, whatever it may be, and they're eating the wrong foods and the wrong frequencies, they're not storing enough glycogen. So they're not taking in enough energy to meet the demands they're placing on their body. The problem with this is the liver stores most of the glycogen. This is where 85 to 95 percent, or 80 to 90 percent, depends who you read, um, of where your thyroid hormone T4 to T3 is actually converted. And what does it actually need to make that conversion? Glucose. So if you're not eating the right foods and the right frequency and not storing glycogen, you can't make thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone is highly important because your cells use it along with glucose to actually produce energy, which is ATP, metabolic water, and CO2. And this allows our body to function with a kind of feedback way uh, in a homeostatic state, to allow things to constantly be moving so we're always in a metabolic state. The problem is most people are not in this metabolic state. So when we're running from a lion, think about it. 
Are you thinking about procreating? No, you're running from a lion. This is why most people have fertility issues. When you're running from a lion or you're stressed, are you thinking about going to the bathroom or do you have an appetite? No, because you're running from a lion. Of course you don't want to eat food when you're running from a lion or you're stressed, or you don't want to take a crap when you're running from a lion because you're stressed. So that's the body's perceived need for energy. That's a sign that the body's under stress. So when we're actually constipated, if you think about it, this is a true sign of the state of our metabolism. It's a true sign that we're in a hypometabolic state. It's a true sign that we're maybe on our way to being hypothyroid. And it's a true sign that we're not storing glycogen and we're not using that to convert thyroid hormone efficiently and we're actually producing lactic acid at the cell level. It's a true sign of your baseline metabolism. Now a lot of people think it's the food I eat. I get to eat a lot of veggies because they have fiber in them. If I eat more fiber, I'm going to go to the bathroom better. That's actually a band-aid to actually get you through the constipation that you're in because it's a true study of your metabolism. Because if you take away those foods, which you think have fiber, right, you're actually going to become more constipated. And a lot of people use these foods to make them regular. But the funny thing is most foods, all foods have fiber in them. Everything, the veggies have fiber in them. All foods have fiber in them. Right? You can get fiber from almost all your foods. So the interesting experiment is if you take away your probiotics, which you don't need, if you take away a lot of your leafy greens, which you don't need, you need fruits and roots, and if you take away a lot of your supplements that you're using to help as a band-aid to create the illusion that you have a normal GI system when you really don't, you'll actually be constipated. Once again, that's a true sign of your metabolism because, as I mentioned, thyroid hormone not only regulates the heart rate, it regulates GI motility. So if we begin to eat the right metabolic foods, the right types of proteins, like shellfish, whitefish, dairy, eggs, broth, gelatin, things like that, you know, decrease the amount of muscle meat. So if we eat lots of fruits and roots, we increase our intake of broth, eat raw carrots one to two times a day, increase our salt intake, etc., etc. And we do this in the right way, in the right food frequency to meet your own metabolic needs. Over time, we actually will increase the story of glycogen increase the conversion of thyroid hormone, thus increasing the cell's effect on all the systems of the body, especially the GI system, taking your body out of that hypometabolic or hypothyroid state like Schaefer, Bond, and Kim talked about, thus increasing GI motility. Hopefully that makes sense. Of course I talk fast. That's who I am. Rewind it, pause it, play it again. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm out of here.